Now, did you have a translator at all? How, how did they know exactly what you were doing if you couldn't speak Quechua or Spanish at that, at that point? Or well, I spoke a little bit of Spanish in the case of Peru, and then, of course, I learned Spanish over the five years that I was there. In China, I learned a little bit of Putunghua, and they also knew a little bit of Putunghua, but in China, I must say, a lot of it was through body language. Uh, and just making a real effort because I was traveling in China for one year with two small foreign children. They'd never seen anybody like us coming to their village and you know, although they, were, although they were shy, they couldn't resist creeping up and taking a better look at the kids playing. And then, you know, one thing led to another and I'd catch a little corner of something and I'd go and pull on that and it would be an apron string and then the whole apron would be revealed. Then they'd be showing it to me. Then the next lady would be pulling out hers. And um, because we had a lot of time and they also had a lot of time, these things could unfold. It was quite different depending on which country I was in. You know, Japan was a different story. My very much more sophisticated people, but uh, reciprocally appreciative of textiles. So it's the same kind of thing. Once people know that you're interested, they make an effort to teach you or lead you forward.